So the FDA has put these regulations in place called 21 CFR Part 11. And basically what they are, and it's funny because we talked to various people and, and I think that it's good to just kind of cover the concept here to just make sure everybody has it. So you think of the old days, you had paper and you had your data on the paper and then the person to, tested to that by actually putting a wet signature on that paper. Well, now we're into, we don't wanna do everything on paper, we wanna do it electronically. Well, there's challenges that come up. Somebody could change it electronically. Uh, it could be lost. It could be, how do you know who actually put, you know, attested to the, that the information is correct? So the regulations apply to just that. We're gonna collect information electronically. We want to ensure that data, it, the integrity of it is good and trustworthy. It's reliable and who, you know, attested to that information that it was accurate and all that. So two parts to it. One, you have the electronic signature. That is just basically if Jeff Fitch is in front of the computer, that we need to know Jeff is really there. That he didn't share his password and other people, you know, are using his password. So part of the regulation is uh, procedures to prevent you know, rules basically saying, Jeff, don't share your password. <laughs> the other part of it is the system saying, hey, I need to know Jeff's here. He didn't forget to log out and somebody else came along. So it re-pops up and asks him to authenticate again. Um, you might even run into where you need multiple signatures. And then the electronic records aspect of that, that you have a, an accurate historic record of all the data for your process that you are doing that you can maintain and go back to. And if there was alternations made to it, that you have a history of that, you have an audit log of that. So that's that's in essence what 21 CFR part 11 is. We, then we take a look at how our software helps with that, okay? Uh, Ignition has added into their core platform an identity provider. It's used to verify the identity of individuals. They use it as a login system, but you can also uh, use it to challenge to make sure that, that who isn't supposed to be in front of the terminal is in front of that terminal. We have extended beyond that, and uh, we have some extra capabilities that are commonly needed for 21 CFR Part 11. Record generation, We'll show that it's commonly called electronic batch records. So it's just the the uh, all the data used during that process. Uh, audit trails, you know, the, if it changed, when did it change? Who changed it? All that permitted sequencing and steps. I think we kind of showed you that with batch already. Uh, authority checks talked about that. We also have document control in there. So we we saw a document there to do the freeway. And then we can also um, sign those electronic records that we have with the person that's there. And then multi-person uh, integrity. So I talked a little bit about this. The main thing is, is that we have some tools in here that allow you to set up templates of required signatures. So if you need a supervisor and an operator, you can put that expression in. Or I need a supervisor and two operators, I could do that, or ORs, or what, what have you. So it will keep track of who signed, um, who's left to sign, notification of those. It could be on a different system, maybe the supervisor's going on with, a, with an iPad, or maybe you want that supervisor to be at the production terminal. Specifically, you're able to specify that they have to be there. And that's all recorded in the electronic batch records. So we'll take a look at, if we're in our recipe here, I showed this before, um, and I wanna add the, the step to uh, get the electronic signature. I'm gonna come in here and just remove that link. I'm gonna drag the electronic signature over here. Could connect that up. And then 
put a transition below it. And then I'm going to connect that transition up with there. And clean that up a little bit. So in this electronic signature, I have to tell it who I want to sign. So this is where we refer to the templates. Now we have some built-in templates that um, you can, if you want to prevent somebody from stopping a batch or to start a batch, you can go in there and add the people or the roles of people that you want to, to uh, authenticate before they do that. I have, a, I have a, one I created yesterday, which is this validate operator. So I'm going to say use that template and I can put in a description here. So Okay. And that's really all that's needed on that. And let's see, that's UP10. I can name that whatever, but the default is UP10. I am going to say UP10 is complete. So we're going to find out who the operator is before we do the, the freeway. So I'm going to save that off. Gonna add another batch. All right. And um, I'm gonna go back to this demo screen, select that new lot. I'm going to go ahead and start it here. And right away, we see a little signature icon. Again, you can have a uh, component that's always showing. Uh, but this lets me know that I have one authorization that's needed here. So I can go ahead and click it. And I see that, met that description I put in, validate freeway operation. And it just requires a one operator. It's going to verify that I am here doing that freeway. Um, we could have multiple, and you'd see, like if it required also a supervisor, you'd see that all of them are listed. And you have the ability to reject, saying, nope, I don't want to allow that. But I'm going to go ahead and approve, and my tooltips pop up. It's popping up right in the designer here, uh, or not the designer, but the user interface to log in. This is optional and depending on the identity provider you use, this might not be available. It might show up in another tab. Um, you can have your bio uh, input as well. You might have a fingerprint, all that kind of stuff. So for here, I just have my name and password. And I don't want to save that. So now it, it continued on. And we're actually past that if we look in the recipe monitor. We're at past that e-signature step and we're back down into the pre-way now. Okay. So if I go over to the electronic batch record viewer, even though I'm still running that, I can do this. And I can go to the steps, and I have my pre-way step there. I'm going to close this one here. All the details are here. So here's the electronic signature. This is when it began. This is when it ended. Uh, this is where it happened. This is it was approved um, at this date and time, and it required the role of an operator. Uh, 77 seconds. All that data is here, an incredible wealth of data. So not only for this electronic signature, but for the entire batch as well. So if I went back to the one I did previously and look at the mix, we see add ingredient one, we see the lot number that it pulled from, 
just a ton of information. So every time a parameter value changes, it essentially gets recorded off along with the timestamp, even if it changed multiple times, like command changed multiple times here. Here's the start, and then it went to none. You see a complete history, the quantity. I probably didn't need to record off every quantity change, but I did. So this is the electronic batch record. Back to you, Jeff. Good deal. Thank you, Tom. Oh, and I should have mentioned too. So that electronic batch record, it's available. You can get it in JSON. Um, you, can, you can pull it out Python objects. You can uh, use it up in the reporting. There's a data source in the mm -hmm. reporting to do that. We have a component that makes it easy to, for an operator to get in there. That component, you can filter down to what parameters, if you just want the user parameters, if you want to exclude parameters, include parameters to show in that, you can do that. If you want to change the details area and what data is shown in those, you can change those. Very configurable. So it's very intuitive for, for the operator. And um, I think I mentioned all the different areas. So it's not uncommon to pull some of that out, the, the bill of material, what materials are used and the quantities and all that. You can pull that out in a bomb, send that up to your ERP system as a uh, verification of this is what we actually used. 